person ever to license the gangster names for my sauces, wines, condiments, etc. I called my good friend Kerry Simon today because I really need his help. So what I want to do, I want to develop a sauce. Uh -huh. They have to approve it. Right. So it's got to be the best marinara on the shelf. You always think of those sauces as cooking for a long time. And That's being, right. Well, yeah, I have a splash tomato sauce I do like really in right. minutes. You know, we get the pan smoking hot. Add the tomatoes and the sauce is complete. Dominic Capone is flying in today and I'm hopeful that he's the first family of the five families I'm meeting with that will accept my offer. I'm glad that you even took my call and are open to this discussion because it's really, really could be huge for both of us. I see so much value in these gangster names. I mean, they're legendary. Capone, Spilatro, Giancana. Folks are scared to even talk about it, let alone attempt to license their names. I'm gonna risk everything to make this work. You well, know? I mean, Nico, you know, I mean, a lot of people wanted to do this for a long time. And we've always said no. The reason I could pull this off is because I'm from Chicago. My family and their families grew up together in the same neighborhoods. I can reach out to some of these people and that's what I've done and it's really been a blessing. I want to make sure that you have an understanding of what I'm after. You know what I mean? I, I, I need the licensing deal not just for the sauce, it's going to grow into a plethora of things. We're going to do a chardonnay, we're going to do roasted red peppers, we're going to do pastas, we're going to do wine. I'm going to be developing each of these products from scratch and I have to fight some of the monster companies that are already on grocery store shelves. So this is not going to be easy. I met with Kerry Simon today. He did an incredible marinara, man. I mean, I was blown away. That's going to kill the deal. It's going to be my family's recipes, not Kerry Simon's recipes. And here's the thing. Everyone says, what's in the vaults? What's in the vaults? Is it Tommy guns? Is it money? Is it, you know, treasure map? This was in it. This is all the family recipes handed down to me. That right there is priceless. I'm going to be reaching out to Carla Pellegrino because who better than Oreo to tell me if this sauce is as good as the Capones say it is. I mean, this stuff's got to be great because if it's not, I've got everything on the line. It's got to be perfect. You know why we're here? Yes. So he won't let me look at the recipe, but you're going to look at it and you're going to, if you can. If Thank you, you for letting me do that. I love it. Like always, we, when you do a good marinara, it should be good San Marzano canned tomatoes. This is just regular pure olive oil. Saute some garlic, minced garlic, some chopped onions. Let it cook for about 10, 20 minutes without color. That's what we call sweating. It tastes already good, even if we didn't even season it yet. And I love that. Salt in it, a fresh basil. And it has some fresh oregano. Oh. So now we're gonna bring that to a boil and we're gonna let simmer for about two hours. Mm. Tastes good already. Looks good because it's not even red anymore. You see it's orange. That's supposed to be the color. This is the taste <laughs> test. It all ends right here. Let's hope you like it. How about that? You would be surprised how many people have tried to make it because they think they know how to make it, but there's a That's certain great. formula. That's great. And it's I just follow really, it, you know, really that, that's awesome. You just, you know, that's awesome. That's Perfect. that's great. I'm so happy. And uh, we got uh, you guys in business, I guess. Capos, a Chicago mob throwback restaurant serving killer eats. But only for those who are friends of the family. Yeah, how you doing? That's awesome. That is all. Shh, keep it secret. And while Capos may serve many Italian favorites, those in the know come for the family jewels, the meatballs. How does this Italian food compare to other Italian food you've had? It's unique. I've yeah? never had meatballs this delicious. Now, I'm glad you mentioned this, because the meatballs, they actually sell out. Would you, would you lovely ladies take a bite of the meatballs, please? I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> mm. That's fun. Where do you think the recipe for that sauce came from? I guarantee you know this person's name. 
I do. Guaranteed. Who do you think created the recipe? The Godfather. <laughs> Marlon Brando did not create the sauce. This is actually a sauce that is licensed from the Capone family. Wow. wow. Right? I head to the kitchen to learn this meaty family secret. Exhibit A, the Capo's meatball. People in Vegas love Nico's balls. People around the world love Nico's balls. Well, I mean, it's got what you would expect. And then there's a few other things in there that are kind of proprietary, if I, if I may. If he it's... told me, he'd have to kill me. I mean, that's a dividing line. Absolutely. Not just about the ingredients. It's definitely a process in there. There's three cooks in there. Three. Three processes. Now, is that also proprietary? Because one thing I will that's say definitely this. definitely proprietary. But there's obviously one of the processes is a fry, because you get that great crust on the it's outside. A, it's an it's a intense crisp. And I think that's what we're known for. It's awesome. It's like yeah. a creme ballet. Look how pillow soft it is. And it's juicy inside. You can see. Fantastic. That's how we do it. Even more than the Mafia Mystique, Capo's food has built a faithful following with offerings like their made man pastas and their family's famous meatballs. They remind me truthfully of the meatballs my, mo my mother used to make. Wow. But if you're lucky enough to be in the know, you order a one-of-a-kind dish with all the family's fixings. Off the record, they call it the leftovers. All right, I feel like a, I'm a little bit of a made man here. Nico has allowed me to come back into his lair. Thank you so much. My pleasure having you here. Let's get started on the leftovers. Nico starts with a pan of sausage and meatballs, then tops it with mushrooms, onions, and garlic. And this is what I love. It's garlic, it's onions, and it's mushrooms. But on the menu here at Capo's, the mushrooms are referred to as... Buster caps. Yeah, Come on. Man. That's awesome. Next, he loads it all into fresh toasted ciabatta before unveiling the big guns. Let's put a little bit of infamous Capone sauce. I licensed the Capone family back in the day. When wait, I... wait, wait. This sauce. This, I... this recipe is, is the Al Capone recipe. It's the original recipe. That is amazing. The Capone family recipe was unearthed from Al's hidden archives after death. And Capo's continues the tradition with this top secret sauce. So it's not just the leftovers, it's also a little bit of the greatest hits of Capo's. No question. We just want to give enough to bring it all together. And then we're going to bring some cheese on top. OK. I mean, you almost want to eat it right now. A quick brown in the broiler. Hello, gorgeous. And Nico tops off this off-menu monument with two fried eggs and rustic bruschetta topping. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, leave the gun. Take the leftovers. Danielle travels to Sin City to roll with business mogul Nico Santucci. Nico's a made man in Vegas, and Danielle gets a private tour of his one-of-a-kind mansion that is truly zen. Vegas, visiting a great friend of mine, Nico Santucci. So excited to see him. Everyone in Vegas loves him, knows him, and adores him. So in my hotel room today, I pick up this magazine, and don't you know, Nico Santucci is in here. Very handsome man. Modern day mogul, it says. I just can't wait to see him again. It's been so long and see what he's done at Zen Mansion. The wine cellar in the house when I bought it was so remarkable that I really haven't changed it. There was the original vault from the DI Hotel in Las Vegas had been installed in the basement by the previous owner. And all I really did was embellish it with some great wine and a little card table. It's been a wonderful space. Well, Capos is a labor of love for me. I mean, I, I bought and built the original Capos about nine years ago. It was a small mom and pop restaurant that I developed the Chicago Speakeasy that I think we've become famous for. And it's just a, it's just a great space. It reminds me of some of the homes that I do. It's welcoming, it's sexy, it's intimate, it's dark. And uh, since then, I've built other locations, and Capo's the brand has really been blowing up for me. It's been a great brand. Nico, 
Yes, sir. Al Capone would be proud of you. Well, you know what? That's why I built the joint. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's to pay homage to all these old gangsters. You know, growing up in Chicago, this is what we grew up with. This is what you grew up with. This is the food I grew up with. These are the recipes I brought over from there. And we're very proud to deliver it in a way that they would be proud. And you got movie posters all over the wall. You've got an authentic singer. This guy sang with Elvis? Yeah, Kevin DeCosta is the real deal. Old school Vegas doesn't miss a beat. The and your, real deal. Your staff looks like they have a good time. They're all having fun with Well, each you know, other. it's kind of by design, really. I mean, I don't think they really have a choice. <laughs> I mean, really, we want our clients to have a good time, so I want to make sure the staff is exuding that to each client that comes to the door. Hello, I'm Nico Santucci, and I'm the owner and operator of Capo's Restaurant in Las Vegas. Capo's was designed to look and feel like a mobster hangout. It's the whole speakeasy, something that kind of we grew up with in Chicago, but I think it's proven itself. A lot of the menu at Capo's is it's central southern Italian. These are recipes I ate as a kid. Chicken farm, veal marsala, chicken marsala, of course, the godfather's filet. You can't go into Capo's without having the meatballs. The interesting thing about our sauce, when I was curating the Mob Museum in Las Vegas, I ended up engaging the Capone family and doing a licensing deal on recipes that they had. They are as authentic as humanly possible, as close to the bone as I could get it. That's Capone family secret. Those are prohibition crates that are getting ready to get shipped out to customers. My peppers, my sauces are all in those cases. How much are those worth? Each one of those crates is about $200. I mean, do you feel like you're a control freak? I'll tell you what, absolutely. I'm gonna control how my guests feel when they're in my house, absolutely. Well, he does own a couple restaurants, right? Where are you keeping that? And it's just, the meat just didn't Is that right? Bro, could you have called me, maybe? Could we have gone somewhere else? I got a great airline chicken. Really tender, bone in. I mean, that seems like a really odd move for the executive chef to change the main item for the menu without even telling Nico. Absolutely, that's been carefully selected, so a last minute substitution is not what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna go change, fellas. All right, all right. Capo's in Las Vegas, and I have the pleasure of speaking with the owner, Nico. Hello there, how are you? Great, glad to be here. Glad you got the name right. <laughs> I tried. I Tell me about Capo's. Well, Capo's is a, really a labor of what I wanted to bring forward from my youth in Chicago, and it was a speakeasy times for my father and uh, what our family represented in that era. And I think it's a lost art, and I think these sort of dark, sexy environments are really a coming trend in restaurants. And it's something I started about seven years ago with my first location on Tropicana in Las Vegas. This is my newest location, which is kind of the crowning jewel of the Capo's chain. And, our vision for the next five years is to do Capo's Coast to Coast. And what does the name translate to? Well, it, it translates to Mob Boss, which uh, the walls are adorned with great mob bosses from our past and some of whom are family and friends. And it just uh, pays homage to all those people that put their lives on the line for this sort of environment. Ain't love a kick.